please. No, <laughs> I'm King Candy. <laughs> The candy companies we know and love have brought us some pretty amazing treats over the years. And although many of them have been hits, there have been a few blunders every now and again, too. So let's look back on the 10 biggest mistakes candy companies have ever made. When M&M's booted the tanned one. M&M's have been delighting customers with these colorful bites of chocolate for years, and picking out your favorite color to save for last is what all the fun is about when looking at these candies, or rather, chocolates. Lady, for God's sake, I'm just a hard shell chocolate candy. Get help! And it just so happens that the tan one, at least for a time, was in fact the favorite of many a consumer. Does your species like M&M's? So yeah, we'd say that its dismissal was definitely a blunder worth mentioning here. But more than a dismissal, it was removed and never to be seen again. <laughs> I have no idea what you're saying, but count me in! So if you happen to pass that tanning salon on your way to the gym, and happen to see old red and yellow ostentatiously soaking up the sun out front, why don't you take a look out back and look for old tan? hiding under the shadow of his successful peers. And if you do see him, say hello on our part. We miss him something fierce. The Modernization of Conversation Hearts The candies we enjoy, as well as the candy bars, have been with us through the ages. And as we've changed, most of these products stood the test of time. <laughs> Which is why the change that the ever-famous Conversation Hearts went through is most appalling. Or at least for some people. You be the judge. I'm shocked. Shocked. Do you really mind if your tasty, albeit chalky, little drops of joy stay rooted in tradition? Or if they go with the current trends, maybe suggesting that a duck-faced selfie is an Order. Sounds pretty weird for a certain demographic, we guess. <gasps> but then again, maybe earlier fans of the candies didn't appreciate some of the messages that were scrawled across these candies in the 90s. Food for thought. These babies were introduced in 1847, and messages were finally written across these candies in 1866. So when we say they've seen a lot of change, we sure mean it. They've been sending us messages for over 150 years. The official brand name, Sweethearts, officially got their start in 1901, still over a whopping 100 years ago. Now that's tenure. Back then, the candies were a perfect party favor for weddings, especially when seeing typical messages like, Married in white, you have chosen right. Despite the massive controversy over updating these messages to more current lingo, the sales still always spike around Valentine's Day. Gator gum was officially retired. Yeah, I don't think you hear what I'm saying. You're fired. Gatorade has become something of a staple in the field of exercise, nutrition, and sports. It was first developed in 1965 by researchers. It was designed to help the Gators of the University of Florida on the field, hence the name Gatorade. We are not the only ones who appreciate a good pun every now and again. So where do big words come from? Little words. The drink was specifically designed to replace lost nutrients expelled during physical activity. And the notion that water wasn't just enough at such times was born. Water sucks. Gatorade is better. Well, over the years, the drink has risen in popularity, and more than just athletes are drinking it down by the cupful. Many have disputed the drink's actual effect on the human body, and there are those that feel it isn't very good for you. But regardless, that hasn't stopped the Coca-Cola company, the company that currently owns Gatorade and all its products, from releasing newer versions of the drink, specifically the diet options, and of course the protein-infused variants variations, which have gained some success. But perhaps beyond this, some of you would remember that they even released a gum by the name of Gator Gum. And like the beverages, it promised to quench the thirst of millions. Did it actually quench thirst? Perhaps not, but it sure was popular while it lasted. Toblerone's shape-shifting fiasco. You know what, Helena? You don't deserve this big Toblerone. Toblerone is a Swiss brand and has been around since 1908, yet another bar or treat that's been around for over a hundred years. 
The problem here was apparently economic, as the company cited a spike in costs and expenses, so they started adding a bit more space between the triangle-shaped mounds found on these historic pieces of chocolate. Many were outraged. Apparently, even a rather upset William Shatner voiced his disapproval rather publicly, we might add. We've gotta concur. Give us our original shape back. We and Captain Kirk demand it. I Oh yeah, and who can forget that classic episode of Friends when Emily brings back a Toblerone bar? Well, Joey dispatched of that bar quite quickly and comically. We'd bet that Joey too would have a problem with the new shape of the bar. And well, he, the good captain, and us would make a pretty good team at getting that space reduced, wouldn't you say? When Cadbury changed the recipe for cream eggs. In this world, there are a few things you don't do. You never ever put baby in the corner. Nobody puts baby in the corner. You never ever feed them after midnight. Don't ever feed him after midnight. You never ever touch Chris Tucker's radio. Don't you ever touch a black man's radio, boy! And above all else, you never ever ever try to change the recipe for Cadbury cream eggs. But believe it or not, the single group of people that should have known that were the ones who broke the single most important rule in candy manufacturing. They went and changed the recipe for the single most important holiday treat the world over. And the world was a little more than upset, and understandably so. What also upset quite a few people was the change in size, making them a wee bit smaller. How have these people not figured out that you don't mess with the eggs? Just leave the recipe alone. Why fix it if it ain't broke? When three became one, the Three Musketeers bar was, in fact, the third bar introduced by Mars. And if the number three isn't making enough of a mark with most of you there, then perhaps the fact that it once had three bars rolled up into one sweet package will do it for you. It's true. Three Musketeers packages originally came with one strawberry piece, a chocolate piece, and of course, a vanilla piece. But somewhere down the line, they started releasing it as the one piece we know and love today. Now, many don't seem to mind, as the chocolate has done pretty well for itself as it is, but there are those that obviously feel that this was an error, thinking that the three separate pieces and flavors would have only added to the bar's success. Maybe, but we'll never truly know the answer now. When Reese's decided to release a spread. Come to our Liberty Center and get a free juice and Nutella sandwich. Let's face it, spreads have always done well. Even on the savory side of things, spreads are a neat and easy way to get yourself fed and are quite enjoyable at that. Cheese Whiz and cream cheese being perfect examples of the latter. But why, or rather what, possessed Reese's to ever come up with their own spread, we'll never know. The spread tasted nothing like the chocolates that did so well and are so loved by many. Whatever was necessary to preserve the product in that format did something to the taste of the product, and many were turned off, and understandably so. Besides, if you wanted the taste of peanut butter and chocolate, all you had to do was add a little Nutella to your peanut butter sandwich, and there you were. I'm Officer Reese's. What happened here? He got peanut butter on my chocolate. Essentially, this spread was a blunder and was completely unnecessary. The loss of cream savers. This thing tastes exactly like a fancy fruit apple lifesaver. It's pretty cool to have grandmas around when you're growing up. And usually, you can count on them for a really good story and a nice present from time to time. But equally spectacular were the treats that they'd pull out of their purse on that cold winter day. If they hadn't baked it themselves, then it was some obscure piece of candy you'd never seen yourself. Maybe for some of you out there, this candy in particular was one such treat that good old grandma pulled out of the crypt she called a purse, which also contained an endless supply of buttons, thread, Kleenex packages, and packets of sugar or salt. But unfortunately, this specific flavor of life savers, cream savers, was done and gone before we could properly get acquainted with it. Yeah, we're left with the fruity variant, as well as the mint, but this creamy flavor was, well, 
pretty amazing. Too bad this flavor's gone. And if you never tried it, you definitely missed out. When peanut butter Twix went dark. Neil, you are dark on the rock. Mission is a go. Mars Incorporated released the Twix bar back in 1967. While the world was wearing bell-bottom jeans, they were also chomping into this new offering from a company that had already brought them quite a few amazing treats so far. It was first produced in the United Kingdom, and, well, the rest is pretty much history. Of course, we all know about the debates chocolate bar fans have been having since the dawn of the cocoa bean. Essentially, do they prefer dark, white, or milk chocolate? But debates can get heated. Case in point, when Mars saw fit to release a dark chocolate variation of this popular little offering. And oh yeah, the addition of peanut butter equally set a few people to turn from the bar in distaste as well. You just lost us the game. I'm sorry. But hey, what is a product without its critics? Regardless, it was the addition of the abhorrent, for some people, dark chocolate that turned this particular offering into both the economic and public failure that it turned out to be. Failure is not an option. Sorry, Mars, but you blew it on this one. When bonkers cease to exist. He's absolutely bonkers. And that's not bad. Let's go bonkers. Yeah, totally nuts. If you happen to be a fan of fruity candies like Starburst, Skittles, Jolly Rancher, and of course the chewy variants of them all, then maybe Bonkers were for you. If you don't remember them, that's a tragedy in and of itself. <coughs> but for those of you that remember and miss this candy, they were quite enjoyable at that. Fruity and chewy, they had liquefied centers that gushed fruity sweetness into your mouth every time you chomped down on one. And with flavors ranging from grape, strawberry, and watermelon, they were an item to be cherished, to say the least. But those who did cherish them, sadly, are right about now missing them, and gravely at that because they've been gone for quite some time now. And for the most part, people are wondering just who the heck made that decision. It's not like sales were all that bad. Commercials featured senior ladies enjoying the candy, and those ads were always good for a laugh. But unfortunately, they're gone. And well, the chewy variants we have left just aren't the same. Stick around, tap that screen for another great video, show us some love, and hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell.